Hello everyone, and welcome back to my series on Docker. So just to recap our last video, we got the Docker client installed, as well as the Docker server, and we ran our first few Docker commands, the first one being the Docker pull command, which told the server to speak to Docker Hub, which is the registry for all the images, and it pulled down the Ubuntu image, and it stored it locally. After we stored that image, we used it to create our very first container. So that was it for the last video. In this video, we're gonna get a lot more in depth with working with images. So let's hop into a terminal and get started. All right, so we are in our shell here. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll get started with the Docker images command. And this is gonna output all the images that we have on our local repository. So we have the Ubuntu image and it's the 14.04 version and it's three months ago and two, about 200 megs let's go ahead and pull down another image so if we do a docker pull we put the repository name again and then we put the colon and instead of doing 14.04 let's just say we want the latest version so we can see that it's pulling down the image right here and this should complete shortly and after that let's pull down let's look let's actually search docker hub so if we do uh, docker search we can put in any parameter any parameters that we want to search docker hub so I'm gonna search for nginx here we can see we get quite a bit of output here and if I look at the top, we can see that there's an official build of Nginx, and it's got a lot of stores there. So this is the one, that, yeah, it's an official. So this is the one everyone's using for Nginx. So if we want to pull down an Nginx image, we should use that one. So we can do sudo docker Nginx, sorry, sudo docker pull Nginx and it will pull it down. And this will complete pretty quickly here. <clears throat> and then we'll have a look at all our images. So look at that. So we have three images now. We have the Ubuntu 14.04 which was our original one. Now we have an Ubuntu, the latest image, and then Nginx, which is also the latest. So the next thing we should look at is how we can actually take one of these images and modify it. So if I were to hop on, let's clear the screen. If I were to create another Docker container here, like we did in the last video, I would just do a Docker run dash IT and then I give the image name. So I'm going to do use that Ubuntu 14.04. And when we get in there, it's going to bring us into the shell. And in there, I want to, if I type Python, for example, you can see that Python isn't installed in this container. So I'm going to go ahead and install Python and I'm gonna do that with the apt-get update command and then I'm gonna do ampersand ampersand and then apt-get install python sorry about that so this is gonna update the repository and then this is gonna install python so I'm gonna hit enter and I'll speed up the video here and then python should be installed all right, so it looks like everything got installed okay. Now if I type Python, I can see that I'm in a Python shell. And I can do any type of Python command, so just like hello world. So we can see that Python uh, is working. Now I'm gonna exit out of the Python shell, but I'm gonna make sure to keep my container running. Now I'm gonna open a new terminal here. And I'm gonna hop into my docker container here 
So I do that with a Vagrant SSH node one. All right, so I went ahead and got another SSH session open to my Docker server. So now I have two terminal sessions here. I have one that's connected to the container and another one which I'm going to use to run a few Docker commands. And let's have a look at Docker PS. So yes, we can see that container still running. And what we did here is we went in there and we installed Python. But if we were to relaunch another image, Python would not be installed because we haven't applied any changes to the image. So I'm going to go ahead and launch another container here just to illustrate that. So if we do a docker run dash it and then give the image name not 04 it should open another one and we got another container open. If we type python we can see the command is not found. So the changes that we made in this original container didn't get applied to the image. So I'm going to exit out here. And now I'm back on my Docker server. So I want to apply the changes that I made. So to do that, I'm going to use the docker commit command. So I do docker commit and then I'm going to grab this container ID because this is the container that we went in and installed Python on. So we're going to put docker commit and the container ID and then I'm going to give it the same repository name but then I'm going to say colon python for the tag and this is going to commit the image and we should get okay looks like it's committed so if we do a docker images we should see another image there and yes we can see that now if we want to uh, run another image we could do a docker run dash it and then now let's use ubuntu colon python because this is the one that we have python installed on and now if we type python we can see that it works so that's a quick and easy way to take an existing image go into it apply any changes that you need and then commit it to a new image. Alright, so the next thing I want to go over are all the commands that are available for us for docker images. So if I do docker image and just hit enter, it's going to return all the commands that are available for us for docker images. So having a look at this list here, this very first one is the docker build command. And this is very similar to what we just did manually but this uses what is called a docker file to create an image so instead of hopping into the image and manually installing Python or any type of software that you want you would actually use a docker file to say which image you want to use and then the commands that you want to run on top of that image and the applications that you want to launch so let me pull up a quick example of a docker file. Um, I have one right here and we're going to be using this one in the docker file video but I'll briefly go over it here. So the first line is telling docker which image it wants to use. So it's saying from the local library use the Ubuntu 14.04 image and then run a bunch of commands and those commands are apt update and it's doing a python install and everything like that so it's saying use the docker image and then run a bunch of commands and then set the environment variable copy over some files expose a port um, and the rest I can explain later but the entry point is basically the application that's going to be run when you launch the container and then the, arg the command is the arguments that's sent to that entry point. So that's an example of how you can do use the docker build command. As I said before, we'll get more into it when we need to, but it's good to know that it's there. The next command is the docker history command. So let's have a look at that. So if we do 
Docker images, we can see that we have a couple images here. Actually, let me, uh, I created one uh, when I paused the recording of this video, and that was the Python tree command. Let me go ahead and remove that. And to do that, we'll use the docker image remove command. So just to show that off, we're going to do docker image rm. And I can use the image ID, or I can specify it. So I'll just specify it. Hit enter. So it's deleted that image now. And now we can see that we just have our original images that we downloaded. Sorry for the sirens. Yeah, I'm hoping those aren't for someone that caught COVID-19. Uh, so I'm recording this video in the middle of a pandemic. Just to help me get my mind off things. But anyways, we have uh, the four images here. And now I want to go over the concept of layering. And layering is very important to understand, to understand just how efficient Docker is with images. And, it, and it's just a really important concept to know and understand because it just brings so much efficiencies when you're uh, using a lot of similar images and uh, just the way you build them, things get cached with the layers and everything like that. Anyways, if we do a docker image history and we want to spell it correctly and then do ubuntu python we can see that there was there's a base image and you can see this image id is identical to this one right because this was the base image we used and then on top of that there was a change and this is the change and that change was about 38 megabytes so I guess the Python install was 38 megs so basically it's saying I'm gonna use this image and to use for this Python the Ubuntu Python image I'm just gonna apply this layer on top of this one now to illustrate that I'm going to create another container here. I'm going to exit out of this one and let's rerun the commands. So we're creating a new container here using this as the base image and then I'm going to do it doesn't have the tree command so let's do app get install tree And I need app get update first. So this should install it. All right, so that's done installing. And if we type tree, uh, you get a lot of output. I probably should not have done that under root. But anyways, we can see it ran, and if I do a docker ps, we have that new image. So I'm going to commit that. I'm going to do a docker commit. And I'm going to plug that container ID in, and then I'm going to call it Ubuntu Python-tree. And now, if I do a docker image images, you can see this new uh, image I just created. And if I do docker history on both of those ones, docker image history, let, let's type it out. Python and then python-tree you can see that they both use the same base image but their layer is different 
So you can just see how efficient this can be. If you have multiple different images out there, but they all use the same base image layer, you're saving a lot of space. So that's all I really wanted to hit on in regards to layers. Um, they're very important to understand, and as we build more complicated images, we'll make sure to look at the history of the image just to sort of have a better concept of the image layers. So I'll clear the screen and I'll do a Docker image again. And let's have a look at the other commands. So we have the Docker inspect command. So if we did Docker image inspect, we could give the image name. And this is basically giving you information in regards to the image, right? So a whole bunch of information came up. This is all in JSON format. We'll hit on this more in a later video. But basically any information that you need to know about the image is in, in here. And you can inspect it. Uh, the next important ones are the docker image ls, so this shows all the images. Um, prune, prune you'll use once you have a bunch of images just sitting around and no containers are using them and you just want to clear things out. So you can prune the images. Uh, the next thing is pull, so you can pull down from the docker hub or any other docker registry and then push is very similar except for you're pushing an image up so we have this Ubuntu Python tree one we could push this up to our own repository and make sure it's saved and then we could head on over to another computer and pull it down from there so we'll do that in a separate video because you need to log on to docker hub to do that but it's good, just good to know that it's there other than that, we got the remove, and then you can tag the images and everything. All right, so that's everything I have to show for images for now. Um, please join me in the next video. We're going to go over Docker containers again, but we're really going to jump into uh, the parameters that you want to send. So it's a very important video. Please join me for that. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you want to see more content from me, please feel free to subscribe. And uh, I hope to see everyone in the next video.